Okay, it's, uh, it's 2 a.m. and uh, this is going to be the last video that I'm going to record tonight. Uh, so a few things first about the videos. I decided I'm going to release them all on Monday so you don't have to wait uh, every day to get the new one. And I'll be surprised if anybody watches them all in order on one day. I'll be surprised if anybody watches them all, period. They're like on average 15 minutes, like 20 minutes being the longest one so far. That's really weird because the production overhead is so low. I mean, I just sit down, here's the camera, there's the screen and just start talking. And so it's easy to make them and it's easy to make them long. And I really, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm really enjoying myself because I get to talk naturally. I don't have a script. Usually I write a script and then I come and do several takes for each sentence and then chop them up and put them together. You know, and I, I feel like they come ac across pretty concise and like, you know, relatively well produced for a YouTube video anyhow. Well, for a coding YouTube video. But uh, this is quite nice. I feel comfortable. I feel, I feel like I'm doing some cool stuff. I don't know. What's your guys' opinion? Do you like this format? Do you appreciate the candor? And do you appreciate being able to see what I'm doing as I'm doing it instead of having me uh, tell you principles and show you examples of things that are mostly done already? What's your opinion? I really, 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 really want to know. Uh, would you please let me down in the comments or, or just, you know, thumbs down all of these videos if you hate them? thumbs them up if you like them, whatever. So um, all these videos are gonna be released on Monday and if you watch the other ones before this one, which makes sense because they're, they come before it, um, I'm talking about how they're gonna be released one uh, every day this week, but that's wrong. And now you're, now you understand why you're watching them all on Monday. What a surprise. What a mystery that is unraveled. I bet you feel like, uh, you know, the Hardy Boys or something like that. You're so smart. You're so clever. Look at you. You're amazing. Anyhow, I want to share something with you. This is the last video, and it actually doesn't have anything to do with coding. It actually uh, doesn't have much to do with anything we've talked about so far, other than it's just like one of those awesome, awesome, awesome tips. Is the mic on? Ah, the mic is on. Of course it's on. It's always on. It's been on. I've been psyched out every video. I need like a little, what's it called, where the volume goes up and down? I need a visual volume feedback on this display. Anyhow, this tip that I'm gonna share with you, if you apply it and make it use of your everyday computer hacking, um, it will like totally speed up your work because it's just so such a great tip. Okay, so look at the screen. Everybody knows about this is from Mac, by the way. Everybody knows about command space. Command space will enable you to uh, quickly bring up any, you can launch any program. Um, you can also search for things. Also, you can do math in it, like 23 plus 2014 is 37. Did you know that? I know it, so I just typed it in my spotlight. Hey, anyway, let's do this. Um, everybody knows about that. Let me show you the other one that you, that you probably don't know about. You probably, hey, you know about this already, don't you? Because you're so smart and clever. Remember, we established that already. Anyhow, if you didn't know, well, we're pretending that you do know about it. So let's just talk about the thing you already know about. Here we are on the screen. Remember how this text, uh, this SAS file that I'm twerking in, not twerking in, working in, is not syntax highlighted uh, and I would like it to be I would like to quickly browse and see the selectors colorized differently than the um, the uh, the values the properties and values so I can go into actions uh, oops I'm going to view language and actually even though this is SAS I use the stylus syntax highlighter because of the non-bracketed nature of the syntax flavor I like. It's not really, everybody, 
Everybody uses SCSS, and it's so frustrating. It's like, it's, SASS is so much better. And maybe I'll make another quick video, huh? maybe six videos, oh my gosh, because I just thought of another tip that I could make for the next video. And it's another reason that SAS is better than SCSS. Anyhow, I use Stylus to highlight my syntaxes. But let me show you this. Instead of having to do this like menu search, view language, and scroll down to find Stylus, I can just type. Let me grab the camera and show you my keyboard. Can you see this? I'm doing, that's the wrong keys. <laughs> I'm doing uh, shift, command, that's the question mark. Is that blurry? Oh, this is so awkward for me. I'm doing shift command question mark. And okay, now you're back here. Yeah, focus. Okay, so looking at the screen, shift command question mark. What that's what it, that is doing is popping up this help menu with a search in it. And this search will go through all of the menu items on um, on the menu bar of the application. So if I just pop open that help search menu and I type sty this and I can just press the down arrow. And look at that, I got this finger arrow pointing right to stylus. I can play, press return. Now you may have used the help menu before because it's so helpful, but just that command shift question mark, that's so great. It's so quick and easy. I mean, I use it all the time. Here's a few other examples. I'm in Chrome and I was telling you guys about Bourbon earlier and I, I was looking at the, uh, the documentation for it like the other day. So if I just command shift question mark Bourbon documentation, there it is. It, it looked in my recent history and found it. And look at that. Here's my Bourbon documentation. I can find all the things I can do with Bourbon. Here's Photoshop. I have this thing. It's a, I, I was doing a an animation before I use this iMac looking screen as if to represent computers. If I just take off this background, take off the shadow too, and yeah, whatever, and I do Command Shift Trim because I want to get rid of that uh, negative space around it or the empty pixels. Trim, it's floating, it finds it. So here's actually another thing. In Photoshop, I don't know why, it's really picky. It's really buggy, I guess, in Photoshop. But it doesn't do it. You can't hit enter and it doesn't do anything. So, But at least it finds it for you, because I don't know where half the stuff is in the menu, because I always search for it. So anyway, it's right here. So I can just move my mouse over it and choose it, hit enter, and it trimmed it, just like I thought it would. This is another great way, a great, great way of, of extracting um, elements from a PSD if you're coding. Maybe I'll throw this tip on later. Got so many good tips for you guys. But anyway, if you just, you can extract uh, PSDs by doing the trim. Uh, it's way cleaner and it's way easier than doing any slicing. I never slice. Using the slice tool is totally noobish. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So the, the tip of the day is um, this this help feature and this is in all across Macintosh in any application uh, and if you have Windows or Linux I guess if you do Linux or Chrome OS whatever I don't know what the the you know corollary is there but this is super helpful and it will like you know totally like a power user kind of thing but you already knew that didn't you remember you're smart and you're clever and is this mic on that's it for today take care see you guys tomorrow should i do six videos oh dang i could probably do six videos it's only two o'clock in the morning my kids are gonna wake me up in like four hours because they don't sleep They do sleep. I'm just awake when they sleep because I can't get anything done when they're awake. <laughs> Paradox.